Are we live? Okay, it said it was trying to reconnect. Hi everybody, this is Sarah from sarahnissen.com. I am going to talk to you today about tongue tie, something that I've been researching recently, actually for a long time, but really getting into recently. I recently started doing orofacial myofunctional therapy. It's a very long name for what is mouth and cheek and neck um, muscle exercises. So why I'm doing that, and I actually started with my 10 year old son as well, because why I'm doing that is we went to the orofacial myofunctional therapist for an assessment for tongue tie and just general mouth um, swallowing functionality, I guess you'd call it. And she asks a whole bunch of questions about different symptoms that we might have, and then um, has a look at our mouth and gives us an assessment. So she was asking me all these questions like, you know, do you grind your teeth? Do you snore? You know, and I was like, no, no. Um, do you bite your nails? I used to bite my nails up until about three years ago. My son bites his nails. So, um, things like that. But then she goes, you know, just open your mouth. So I open my mouth and she goes, your tongue is tied. I'm like, okay, well, I thought so, but <laughs> anyway, anyway, nobody had, what infuriates me is that I had been to specialists and asked them, people who actually perform the laser phrenectomies, and a phrenectomy is releasing the tissue, the frenum, which is the tissue under the tongue, and um, a frenum is actually any tissue that holds other tissue in place. That's not the precise definition, but um, it's this thing under your tongue. A hard band of tissue when it's stretched that can be restricting movement and proper swallowing um, if it's too restricted. Um, and so she says, yeah, you're tongue tied. And I'm like, well, right. So I had been to other surgeon, other dentists, and even a specialist in um, facial development in the past, and for my son, and nobody had told us anything. Nobody had mentioned tongue tie until I found online a tongue tied adults support group. Actually, I'd heard about it for babies and for kids. It causes a lot of breastfeeding problems, a lot of colic and reflux and things that people think might be food allergies sometimes come from tongue tie in babies. So it's more talked about, at least in the US, um, for babies. But those babies go on to grow up and still are adults and oftentimes have ties in their mouths that are not addressed, that are causing all sorts of symptoms. So I have this list of different physical signs in adults that could be a symptom of tongue tie. And if you have any of these and you've been struggling with them for a long time, it's probably a really good idea to get an assessment done. You can get an assessment done online. Um, you can join the Facebook group and people, you know, lay people will tell you whether it looks like you have a, <laughs> a tongue tie or not. Um, but the majority, you know, you've really got to go to somebody, a professional. However, if your mouth looks like mine, where you're supposed to, what's happening is you're supposed to be able to, you're supposed to be able to touch your tongue to the middle of those two bumps that are like right here in your mouth. Right here. And you're supposed to be able to open your mouth a fair distance. And mine looks like this. That's all I can do. And when I open my mouth fully, it's like this. So you can see that there's a significant amount of space that I cannot open it, which means that for me, I'm gonna go over the list of symptoms in a second, but for me, I can't reach my tongue behind my rear molars. And I don't even have my wisdom teeth, which would be my rear rear molars if they had been kept, if I had kept them, um, which has for me the biggest symptom, well, one of the biggest symptoms is that all of my rear molars have big, 
fillings in them from decay because I was not, I'm not able to clean properly in my back teeth after I eat. And that means that there's a whole host of problems. Um, as well as the biggest thing for me actually has been sleeping during sleeping recently. I, in the last couple of years, I've had panic attacks. And she actually said that that can be from my body going into, you know, low amount of oxygen from, they, can, they call it sleep apnea if you totally stop breathing, but oftentimes it can be my airways obstructed by my tongue resting in the wrong place. And my body like wakes up in a panic because I feel like I'm suffocating, which is actually what it felt like. So I'm just shocked. Like if that was caused by that, that'll be fantastic if I can actually fix that. Um, your tongue is supposed to rest at the tip of it, between those ridges, a little bit in front of it, suction to the roof of your mouth, like that. And that's how it's supposed to rest while you're sleeping and when you're resting, when you're not swallowing or talking or eating. That is not how my tongue was resting. It was resting low. My teeth still are surprisingly pretty good um, in the front, but in the back, they're kind of, the back molars don't match each other. And like I said, the decay that I had when I was younger, and this was when I was an adult, not really when I was a kid even, I had the decay as an adult. So, the list of signs in adults, forward head posture, that's one of mine. I'm gonna stand up and see if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see with that sign. But basically my head is going like this instead of, it should be much more up like this. But because I have restriction, like tissue restriction, whoa, I'm gonna fall off my ball here. I'm unable to properly pull my head back like this without feeling like I can't breathe. So the whole thing developed like that since I was a baby. Recessed chin or jaw, that's what my son has. Long face syndrome, that happens when you have a narrow, I don't have this, but you have narrow teeth and bottom jaw, the, the narrowness of the arches because you rest with your tongue open and you breathe through your mouth. Your tongue pushes on the insides of the teeth mm -hmm. and actually, when it's resting in the bright place, actually cause, creates like a force against it and the outside of your lips, if they're strong, creates a force inward and keeps your teeth developing in a very healthy way, presuming that you're eating well as well. But if your tongue's up there resting while you're sleeping, while you're resting throughout the day, while you're swallowing, putting all that pressure on it, then it keeps the teeth nice and wide. The arch is nice and low and wide and you're breathing in the back. You can breathe properly through your nose. If you're breathing through your mouth, then you don't have that. A gummy smile can be a sign of tongue tie. Um, torticollis, which is twisting of your neck. A high palate, buck teeth. We all know what that is. Overbite, underbite, or open bite. So my son has a 100% deep bite where he bites down. He can't see any of his bottom teeth. The top teeth cover it because his jaw is pulled back. Poor guy. Forked tongue. Now mine is kind of like that. <laughs> Not as forked as some people's, luckily. Um, small mouth, crusty lips, narrow jaws. I already said that. Crooked teeth if you needed braces. Premature wrinkles, especially around the eyebrows. Um, you know, I'm 40, and I actually noticed recently that I was my eyes were wrinkly, and my mouth was my wrinkles here. And I've been doing these myofunctional exercises for only two weeks, and I feel like this has become less wrinkled, and my mouth has actually become stronger. Um, it's really interesting, <laughs> pretty awesome. I can't wait to see what happens. I actually plan to have the tongue tie release, so I'm gonna let you know what happens with that. Um, and I'll show you. I'm, I'm basically waiting on when the myofunctional therapist thinks that my son and I are ready. And by the way, let's see, I will list the rest of these and then I'll tell you about that. Um, smiling with tongue resting in between the teeth. So yeah, my tongue is resting like this, kind of like that. And it's supposed to rest like this. Now you don't see any, any tongue. You're supposed to swallow that way too, and I'm finding that practice to be very difficult. Um, 
horizontal wrinkle on Cupid's bow dimple when smiling. Horizontal wrinkle, I don't know what that means. Smiling with tongue resting in between. Smiling with both upper and lower teeth or lower teeth only. I guess that's like this or this. I don't have that going on. And then common problems in adults, sleep apnea, TMJ, or clicking in the jaw. If you have TMJ or clicking in your jaw, get checked um, for, te for teeth, for tongue tie. Grinding of your teeth. I do that. My son does that. Headaches and migraines. Neck, back, and facial pain. Yes. Tell me about it. My neck at the very top, the, um, what do you call it? The atlas. The bone that basically is the top of my spine that attaches to my neck has always been rotated. I've been going to a chiropractor. I went to a chiropractor three times a week for like two years. Before that, I was going for like a year. Nobody can ever get it to stick. It just gets adjusted and then a couple days later, it hurts again. And you know what's amazing is since I've been doing these focusing and these exercises on my tongue, sticking it out, I'm moving it like this, my neck has become so sore. So I'm kind of excited about that, but also it hurts. <laughs> so um, basically I know it's related, you know? If I'm sticking my tongue out, I'm not doing anything differently to my neck, but it is hurting so much that I'm very excited to, I need to do some extra work on it, like get some a deep massage, I think, and help release the muscles while I'm um, going through this process. So I'm gonna look into that next. And let's see, what else? Food, let's see, cavities, gum disease or halitosis, allergies and sinus issues. I've had allergies and my son's had sinus issues. Um, digestive issues, constipation, patient, reflex, IBS. I've dealt with constipation and pretty much my entire adult life. Uh, choking on liquids, food trapping in the palate, cheeks or gums, issues with food textures. Um, that can be because the tongue just cannot use, you can't use the tongue well. Speech issues, when talking fast, tired, or small amounts of alcohol. I noticed my tongue, like I haven't really noticed it until I've thought about it, but it kind of feels like it's too big in my mouth while I'm talking, especially while I'm excited. Um, difficulty or pain opening the mouth wide. I don't have that problem. Pain or discomfort with kissing. Bladder issues, I didn't really have pain or discomfort with kissing, but I did notice my tongue doesn't stick out very far. Anxiety or always feeling high strung? Uh, yeah, definitely anxiety. So I'm very, very interested and excited to have it released and to see if some of that feeling can be mitigated. Um, I've been working on that for a while. So yeah, so my plan is to have my son's and my tongue ties released using, there's two different ways to do it, using laser which they just go in while you're awake. Both of them are while you're awake, unless you're a child that's young and can't do this. But, and they, you know, numb it a little bit, hold it up and just whack away, <laughs> whack away gently at the tissue under there. So I don't know if you can see it, but see that? That keeps it from moving up. I should be able to touch the top of my mouth. I can't even imagine being able to do that, but I, I could, should be able to touch the top of my mouth with my tongue and it just hurts underneath there. I have red marks on that little band of tissue, the frenulum, because they, it rubs against my teeth when I stick my tongue out. I got, and that's about as far as I can stick my tongue out. I've been doing two weeks of exercises, so it's getting tighter and better. It's not very far. One of the exercises is to point my tongue like that. Huh? See how pointy it is? Getting better. I can't wait to be able to stick it out like farther than that without it hurting underneath because it's rubbing against my teeth. Um, so anyway, my son, so he is autistic. He is 10 years old. He is highly verbal and highly um, resistant to demands. I've been calling it defiant, but it's not actually defiant. He's pretty anxious quiet because I think he might come in, but he's pretty anxious and he resists demands, demands that are good or bad because he gets anxious about what might happen or something. He has agreed that he thinks he would like to have his tongue tie released. He knows what to expect. He knows it might hurt. He knows it's a possibility that it may need to be done again. 
sometimes um, because the tissue in the mouth heals so quickly, you can actually have to do it again or maybe do it deeper the next time, like farther back. Um, and he's on board. He's doing these exercises with me three times a day for about 10 minutes each. I just can't believe it. Like I think he senses that he knows it's gonna help him because he has what his symptoms are mostly. He actually has issues pronouncing S, S, it sort of is like a slightly lispy sound because his tongue can't move far enough forward, doesn't have enough movement, and R, R, because he can't move that part of his tongue up to the roof of his mouth to pronounce R correctly, R. That's kind of the center of your tongue and he can't move it up. And so he wants to be able to do that. He also makes a gulping sound every time he drinks um, and his digestion isn't as ideal as it could be. It's a lot better since we've been working on a lot of different things, um, but it's not ideal. He's also really picky with food um, and doesn't like a lot of vegetables and things like that. And I think it's all related. So I cannot wait to report back after we've been doing this, I think in like maybe a couple of weeks, we'll be ready for the release. And then after that, stretching, more stretching, more doing the exercises during that process. Um, I would not get a tongue tie release without having the therapy because it's like, what would it be like? It would be like, um, I don't know, having some kind of sports surgery and then not doing rehab, you know, not doing physical therapy. This basically is physical therapy for your mouth. You need to do it in order to get the most out of the tie. And the tie release is not super cheap, so it's like, you want to invest in this so that it lasts and so you get the most out of it for yourself so that it's a lasting benefit for you. Um, as far as little infants, it's not so difficult because they don't have all the old patterns in their tongue usage and the way they swallow and things yet. So they get the release done. They don't have to do the exercises. So please get your kids checked a couple of times because another thing that one of the things that actually really irritates me is that I was talking to this lovely, wonderful myofunctional therapist that we have, and she was saying that there's no real regulations for how, no standards for how to check for a tie in this in the United States or in Europe, most of Europe. In Brazil, there is. There's a protocol, and they do it from birth, um, which is amazing, and I wish that everybody can be born in Brazil for that reason. But um, so I think it would change just our health for the better. But there's a lot of different reasons why she was saying, the myofunctional therapist was saying that we don't have it here in this country. Um, but number one, I mean, I've been to specialists and I asked them, people who deal with jaw um, development, specialists who deal with that for kids and adults, and I asked about it and they didn't mention, they said, no, it looks fine. I asked a dentist who does the tie releases. She didn't, she was like, no, yours looks fine. And mine is not fine. It's actually between class three and class four, which is pretty restrictive. Um, I don't know if you can see my neck even since I've been like, watch me swallow this. And I'm choking on the water. See, that's another sign of tongue tie. So tense. All oh, this is tense. It's a swallow. Like, that's so tense. It's just, I can't, and you know, I'm 40 years old. Imagine another 40 years of this. I'm just going to have terrible pain if I don't get it worked on. So it frustrates me. So that's why I'm trying to get the word out there. You know, I actually got a free assessment from this lady. If you need an assessment from somebody, you can get it. You know, um, there's people trying to help out there. So don't let like the cost of the assessment or the cost of the treatment hinder you. You can find a way to do it. You could probably do the treatment once every two weeks or once a month. Um, but anyway, um, if you need help finding somebody in your area, PM me, message me, email me. I will be glad to help you. Um, I just want to get the word out there for this for everybody. Mm, excuse me. See, swallowing air. And um, <laughs> what else? I think that's it for now because I'm getting tired. My tongue's getting tired of talking. 
but um, <laughs> I'll keep coming back and reporting back on how this is progressing for us. We get our new exercises tomorrow. Once a week we go um, and this will be our start of the third week for my son and me doing these myofunctional therapy exercises and then soon I'll hopefully getting, be getting the tongue tie release done and see how that changes my voice. You may hear a difference. All right, if you have any questions or anything that you want to ask me about, just PM me. Um, that's the quickest way to get a hold of me or put a comment down below, email me. Um, yeah, visit my website if you'd like to work with me. This is what I help people do. I help people find different different health and food resources and support to get better, to heal in ways that people have may not have mentioned to you before. Um, I've, people have told me that what I recommend is the right thing for them at the right time that they had never heard of before. So I just love helping people do that. Anyway, talk to you later. Have a wonderful day. Bye.